back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. Um, I have some news, I guess. <laughs> I felt so nervous sitting down to record this. I don't know why. I guess it's just because I've never talked about this before. But you might have seen it on my Instagram earlier today, but... I am engaged. Um, so like I said there, we are just full of surprises this week, which is very fun. But I feel a little bit awkward right now, I think, like I said, because I've just never spoken about this at all. And that has been intentional. Like if you guys have followed me for a while, if you've watched the show from the beginning, then you probably remember that early on, I said that if there was gonna be one thing I would keep private, it would be my dating life. I wanted to keep that super close to my chest. I never wanted to feel like I was putting on a show for people like, oh, here's one boyfriend and then here's another one. Maybe I'm dating this person. I just had no idea how it was going to turn out. I had just moved to a new city. I was suddenly a very public figure. That sounded terrifying to be dating while also being a public person, especially considering how you know personal that is and how serious I take that. So I am very, very grateful that you guys have respected my wishes and respected the fact that I never talked about it because I know that there were questions and speculations. I've seen the comments. I'm aware. So I'm very, very grateful that you have respected that. My fiance Beyonce, that's so weird saying that. He has no interest in being in the limelight, which is one of the reasons why I love him. Um, so he will continue being private and I'm going ahead and setting that boundary. Now, he does not wish to be seen, doesn't need to be talked about at all. So I'm just gonna stop that right after I, you know, make this little <laughs> announcement in the video. But this is obviously a huge and very exciting change in my life. So I wanted to share it with you guys because you're very important to me. We've created this community. I wanted to be transparent and also it's just really fun. And I'm very, very happy and I wanted to share it with you guys. What I will tell you about him is that he is the most incredible and kind and brilliant and resilient man I've ever met. I could not be more lucky and blessed to have met him and fallen in love with him. I literally pinch myself every day. I feel like the luckiest person in the world. He's based, of course, you don't even have to ask. We share the same values. And one of my favorite things about him that I wanna share is that he challenges me and he pushes me every single day, which is something that I've publicly talked about wanting and finding very important. My mom always told me that I should be looking for an intellectual sparring partner to help keep me on my toes. And I absolutely have found one. So I'm very, very happy about that because I never wanted to steamroll somebody. And if you know my personality, you know that that <laughs> could be very, very possible. So I feel lucky in that regard as well. It also feels just very meant to be and serendipitous because he grew up a few miles away from me. I even used to hang out with his little sister when I was very, very young. He crossed paths with my brothers at some points, but I never knew him until I moved to Nashville. So in a lot of ways, loving him feels like coming home. It feels like my hometown. So that's just another reason why it's so wonderful and why I'm so happy. Um, so all of that to say, I can't, I don't know how many times I can say I'm happy, but I'm very, very happy and I'm happy to share it with you all and to share it with this community. And so, yeah, that's the news. And speaking of engagements, guys, because this isn't the entire episode. There is a trend online that we must discuss. It is called Shut Up Rings, and hopefully I was not given one. Before we dive into it, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. So I first heard of this term a few weeks ago during the whole Sophie Turner, Joe Jonas divorce debacle that was taking the internet by storm, and it all started with this TikTok. According to TMZ, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner are headed for a divorce, and I feel incredibly vindicated. I take no pleasure in anyone's marriage breaking up. But I remember a few weeks ago when I posted about how I thought based on the circumstances of their marriage, you know, multiple year engagement, huge age gap, some of the treatment uh, that he gave to her, the fact he broke up with her right before their original wedding in Las Vegas, the cheapness of the Las Vegas wedding, et cetera, et cetera, that it was giving shut up ring vibes. As I pointed out, Nick met and married Priyanka during Joe Jonas's and Sophie Turner's engagement. That's obviously Nick Jonas, his brother. Of the Jonas brothers married to Priyanka Chopra, I believe is her last name. Priyanka Jonas, as of now. Anyway. So you've already been together for years, had a multiple year engagement. Meanwhile, your brother met courted and married his spouse in multiple events during just your engagement. How somebody who met years after you beat you to the altar, it, it, it's, it's a mess. It's shameful. I am glad to be vindicated because people had every excuse in the world. Oh, she was filming this season of Game of Thrones. This happened, that happened, the third happened. And that's why they had to be engaged for years. And oh, they were playing the wedding in France. And because they weren't citizens, blah, 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 blah. 
Priyanka and Nick got married several times, including in India. Also, some context here that is important that I talked about in the divorce episode I did is that Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner dated for many years before getting engaged. I think it was five years, and then they had a two-year-long engagement. And then Priyanka and Nick, they met, you know, and got married within two years. They had huge weddings. Like she had a huge Indian wedding. They had a huge, you know, LA wedding. And then Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas randomly, I think it was after the Grammys one night. It was very soon after Priyana and Nick, I think did their first wedding. They randomly showed up in Las Vegas after the Grammys with a ring pop and got married. And everybody was like, what just happened? It was very weird. It felt very rushed. There was a lot of awkwardness around it. Some of the family wasn't there. Nobody had any idea what was going on. So when she's talking about the rushed ring pop thing, that is the context for you. They're both celebrities with plenty of money. There were lots of ways to get that done. Snap to it. But you all have to stop believing every excuse you hear. The first thing ordinary people say when I say, oh, if it's been years, it's a shut up ring. Oh, well, what if they couldn't afford to get married? What if they're saving up for a nice wedding? What's the excuse here? So if someone who could snap their fingers and put together the most lavish celebration the world has seen with little or no effort isn't doing it for years on end, there's something wrong with that. And that's basically the gist of all of this. So if you did not get it through this video, a shut up ring is basically a ring that a man gives a woman to shut her up because she's been nagging him about getting married. She wants to get married. He's not sure. He just gives her a ring. And then usually they have a pretty long engagement. They, you know, wait for a while. Oh, I don't know. We'll plan the wedding another time. Whatever. Maybe they get married. Maybe they don't. But that is a shut up ring. That is the term we're talking about. And prior to this video, I had no idea that they had a long engagement. I really did not understand the context. So I went down a rabbit hole with this girl because she made a few videos about it. But now the random elopement in Vegas with Ring Pop, it makes a lot more sense, especially knowing how quickly Priyana and Nick did everything compared to them. Somebody commented and said, yep, me and my ex were together for 10 years before we got married, now divorced. He's getting married again to somebody he knew for three years. And guys, we did a whole episode about this as well. And honestly, that was one of my favorite episodes we have ever done. I loved the comments under that episode. It was about guys often marrying the next girl and doing so very, very quickly after being in a long-term relationship that did not end in an engagement. It's great. I had a lot of fun talking about it. I think it's very important. Anyway, like I said, this was the first time that I had heard about this term. I'd heard shut up ring. Obviously, I knew that this type of thing existed and happened, but I didn't know that there was a term for it. But then immediately, I was seeing it everywhere on TikTok. And by this point, I think that the tag shut up ring has over 10 million views on the platform. Here's another video for you guys. Ladies, if you've been engaged, for a certain amount of years and there's no date set, there's no plan set, there's no anything set to get the ball rolling <laughs> to say I do, you're wearing a shut up ring. If you know you're putting a ring on a lady's finger for so you can silence the noise, quiet the pressure, yeah, because the pressure is loud, it gets heavy and you're just trying to be like, raw. let me just snip it on, yeah, you know you're giving her a shot top ring. So it's not just how you get the ring, but it's also what happens after the ring is on your finger, and that's very important. Now, the other video I wanna show you is actually from the original creator who did that Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas video. She also made this great one, and she is stitching an advice video that somebody else did. This one is just wild, guys. Crazy. I think this girl just needed to be validated. <laughs> is it stupid to stick around until my boyfriend is ready to marry me? Yes, yes it is. You all are constantly asking me, how do I avoid the shut up ring? By reading the sign in the beginning. This man is never going to marry her and we're going to tick off the signs. Listen to what the boyfriend said. I've been with my boyfriend for about two years and about a year ago I told him that I see him as someone I could marry and have kids with one day. He straight away said that he wouldn't be ready until we both earned X amount of money and had a house along with some other qualifications. I'm ashamed as I know you're not supposed to do this but I brought up how he had set all those conditions a year ago and we've achieved them today. I earn more than he said and we have a house renting but still a lovely home. He flipped out and said that it was never about these things and he just doesn't know if he can marry me because of how I am as a person. <laughs> Excuse me? That should have been the end right there, lady. That should have been it. How you are as a person? Run away. Run away. Like they do in Monty Python. Run away! Run away! Run away! The first red flag was when she said she had been with this guy for two years and she had, she had brought this up a year in. If a man is excited about you, as we all know, the rule is men know right away. True. So... If at six months in, he is not the one who has advanced serious relationship talk, if he has not introduced you to his mother or whoever is important in his life, if he has not, you know, been talking about a serious commitment, if he has not let something slip about the future with you one day, he does not see you as his wife. That may be hard to accept. 
I'm sorry that it is, but it's the truth. And the other thing I is, love this girl. you may say, oh, my man didn't do that, but we still ended up getting married. Let's check on the quality of that later. He wanted to give you some crazy conditions so he could kick the can down the road, still enjoy your company, still be with you, still get all the benefits. It's like that John Mulaney line in one of his stand-up specials where he's like, why would a man buy the cow when he's getting the milk for free? What's been happening for two years? Right there. We don't even need to watch the rest of this. It's a five minute long video. She goes on and she takes off some more red flags, but this is the perfect example of something that could easily turn into a shut up ring. Those are the red flags. You run away. You run away. I think that this girl is like the queen of the shut up ring discourse now online. Like I said, she has so many videos about it and they are all Jeff's kiss, very, very funny. But that whole advice video was just so rough. You guys can go watch it in its entirety if you want. That girl just needs to leave that man, maybe go get a dog and then feed that dog rough greens. You guys obviously know this, but there is very little that I love more than my dogs, Rocky and Tater. And I definitely want them to be as healthy as possible, which is why I love being a partner with Rough Greens. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black, the founder of Rough Greens, is focused on improving the health of every dog in America. And yes, we all know by now that dog food is dead food. The traditional kibble that is peddled to you everywhere you turn is not the best option for your dogs. You should get Rough Greens to boost your dog's food back to life. Rough Greens is not a whole food. It is a supplement that you can add to your dog's food that contains all the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs on a daily basis. Things that they're probably not getting from their normal kibble. And because it's a supplement versus a whole food, you don't have to go out and buy some fancy new expensive dog food. You can just sprinkle Rough Greens on their food every single day and you will be leagues ahead from where you were. Dog owners everywhere like me are raving about Rough Greens because it supports healthy joints, improves bad breath, boost energy levels, and so much more. We are what we eat, and that obviously goes for dogs too. My dogs have been eating a raw diet for the last six years or so, but even though I'm pretty confident in doing that, I love adding Rough Greens to their food to really make sure they are getting everything they need. Rocky and Tater love Rough Greens. They wolf it down every single morning. They like their greens a lot more than I like drinking my greens, so I think your dogs will love it too. The team at Rough Greens is so confident that their products will improve your dog's health that they are offering my viewers a free Jumpstart trial bag so that your dog can try it too. This free Jumpstart trial bag can be at your door in just a few business days, so there is no reason to wait. Go to freeroughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG. Again, that is freeroughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG today. But back to that video. Thankfully, I did not see a single person in the comments who was delusional enough to tell that girl that she should stay. One person said, why is she even asking for advice after he said that she should have already hid open tuna cans in his car and ghosted him? I actually saw a video about that recently where a woman, I think her husband divorced her, left her for another woman. And so she stuck fish in the vents, like in the air conditioning and just left. <laughs> and had, like he had no idea and the house stunk. Anyway, apparently that's a common thing online. I'm seeing somebody else said, my husband said that he could see himself marrying me one month in men know right away. And now guys, I can publicly say I've been there. And that commenter is not wrong. Anyway, somebody else said at six months, my ex told me he wasn't sure about a future with me. I immediately left. Good for you. A year and change later, I'm engaged to the love of my life. Same pattern we're seeing guys in the old episode, in this episode, it's a pattern. Another person said, people are scared to be alone. And I think that really is the crux of all of this, but you will never meet a better person, the right person, if you do not break away from those dusty old relationships and open yourself up to something new. Do not let yourself be somebody's placeholder and definitely do not treat somebody as your own placeholder. That is completely wrong. Have some self-respect, have some respect for the other person, this situation is not great for either party. Evie Magazine also wrote a great piece about this and there are some harsh truths in here. This whole episode is just harsh truths, but they said, if he proposes to you to get you to stop nagging him or without the intention of staying married to you for the rest of his life, he does not care for you in the way that you want him to. And if you accept his proposal, knowing or even suspecting that he is being insincere, you might not care for yourself as much as you need to. Oh, it's not just about him, it's also about you. They go on and they said, we all deserve a man who wants overwhelmingly so to marry us. We should settle for nothing less, in fact. And it shouldn't need to be said that even if you get a shut up ring, you don't need to go through with it. From a big picture perspective, it is always preferable to give a ring back rather than spend thousands on a divorce attorney. As a child of divorce, I can say yes, that is very expensive. You do not want to go through that. And obviously, I think I need to say this, you need to strike a balance between telling your partner what you want 
and then getting to this shut up ring point. In the episode that I've been referencing that I did a couple months ago, I talk about how women and men both should not put up with being strung along. But there's a difference between telling somebody what you want up front, what you're envisioning for your future, and then ending it if you're not on the same page, and making your goals clear, but then hanging on and begging for them to change their minds for years on end to the point where the man just says F it and gives you a shut up ring. It comes down to self-respect and not wasting your precious time and energy, which are things that you can never get back, never. You can get money back, you can buy new things. You can get a new place to live. You can never get your time and your energy back. Those should be your most valuable assets. You should know what you want. You should be clear about it. But if you're dating intentionally and you're dating for marriage, you also have to know when to let go and move on to somebody who is on the same page as you. In the Jonas Brothers world, you want to be Priyanka and Nick, not Sophie and Joe. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.